I am more qualified than APC candidate Peter B. Welcome to the news and please subscribe to our channel. Discourses ASU, subsidy, education, economy, unity, insecurity, and others. This was a chance meeting, but it was worth the opportunity. Dr. Peter Gregory Ongwasi Obi, simply known as Peter Obi, is the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, LP. We cannot begin to discuss Obi in terms of education without becoming a bore. Is it University of Insuka, Lagos Business School, Harvard Business School, Boston, USA, Boston, London School of Economics, Columbia Business School, New York, USA Institute for Management, Development, Switzerland, Kellogg Graduate School of Management, USA Oxford University, Said Business School, Cambridge University, George Business School. Where do you start from? Obi pontificates a lot and is sometimes verges on effusive sanctimony about a sense of knowledge. Some Nigerians are not comfortable with that, but he moves. However, he can be forgiven, having served on the Federal Economic or National Economic Council Committee on Minimum Wage, Negotiation with Labour on Subsidy, Committee on Mass Transit, Committee on Natural Resource, Committee on Power Sector Reform, Committee on Sharing of MDG's Forms, Committee on Accurate Data on Nigeria's Oil Import and Export, Agricultural Transformation Implementation Council, Subcommittee on NEETS, Analysis of Public Universities in Nigeria, or Review Committee on the Power Sector. His participation in this committee suggests that he will be versed in the issues. But this is now a presidential contest which is not just about being cerebral. In this interview, Obi speaks about the coalition to take back Nigeria. He discusses a number of issues in the little time we had. You have consistently maintained that education is the bedrock of development. Now, let us look at this Asuish issue. The president reportedly gave his education minister a two-week ultimatum to resolve the issue. What is your take? He replied, what we have at our hands is a situation that requires presidential intervention. The minister has been given an ultimatum, has not just been appointed to foresee the educational sector. It is not that he has just been drafted to do the job. This is a job that has not been done to deliver on an outcome that is desirable. So giving an ultimatum to your minister is like saying, continue to talk as they have been doing. President Bahari is the one on whose decks the box stop. He should sit with Asu and engage and resolve this matter. If he can sit with party leaders over presidential primaries and get a result, he should sit with ASU and ensure that this strike comes to an end. Then, our political leaders too should please take this matter very seriously. A situation where we have local government councillors and chairmen and assembly members any much more than professors is not ideal. Education is key. The president should take charge. The same thing goes for the looming food crisis. Our president should spend the remaining nine or ten months to take personal charge. NLC has threatened to embark on solidarity strike this week. He replied, the president should pay serious attention personally to the ASU strike. The most important investment a nation can give to its citizens is education. And for Nigeria, it is even more critical because today, Nigeria is one of the worst globally in terms of human capital. We are 152 over 158, and I've always said it that we, when we talk about infrastructure that is going to drive development, the first infrastructure you need is the human infrastructure. You cannot talk about physical infrastructure unless you've dealt with human infrastructure and education is the key. Today, we borrow money and borrow labor from China. What that shows is that you have not built your human infrastructure, and so it's like you're not building your future. So the president needs to take control immediately. And the issue of health, education, and pulling people out of poverty are the most critical agenda for development, and it should take control of it forthwith. But recently, the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, APC, reportedly said the president has given him the mandate to wade into the crisis of ASU. He replied, I wonder what that means. 
Our children have not been in school for months now. It also happened in 2020. The global average for tertiary institution intake is about 38%. In the Western world, it is 50%. Nigeria is 9%. We are not even a quarter of the global average. Our team has tried to engage in study, even if for knowledge sake, the issues around us so because we need to explore and study what the issues are and we have our own ideas of how we can be able to invest and do more about education at the basic level and how we can support the tertiary level to ensure that we have something better. We have something better. Our team cannot imagine being on the seat for three months and we will have the issue of that magnitude and I won't engage personally. Even as a governor, we had a similar issue and I had to personally engage ASU, which is where we resolved it in Anambra State and our state university is on. One of the major issues in the crisis has to do with funding. Funding, yes, but not funding alone. The relationship between both parties is very weak. If you have an agreement with somebody, even if it cannot be achieved 100%, 100% effort is still required. So trust is important. Usually, government do not achieve everything globally, but you can see 100% effort being put in. You can see intention, commitment to fulfill that agreement. This is what has been lacking. And you see us going into all sorts of agreement, policy formulation without regard to implementation. If people see the effort, they will shift ground. But when they see, they do not see hope, they become rigid. That is where we are now. What gives you the confidence that you too cannot become a victim of a crisis like Buhari? Because when you hear federal government side of a story, it evokes sympathy for the federal government. Look, this was an agreement signed in 2009 and you have not been paying. Everybody will be adamant on full release. It's like somebody who stopped the food for long and it's your duty to provide food. Now you say you want to provide the food and you're bringing what we call swallow without soup and saying, be thankful first. Things do not work that way. Once you sign an agreement, there must be an effort, an intention to redeem the agreement. There must be engagement in a trust-like manner. My former head of service wrote an article, Stinginess as a Development Strategy. When I started cutting some allowances and waste, many civil servants were not happy. But when they saw that their leave bonuses Pensions and gratuity were being paid with the savings, the people began to develop trust, and that was how we did it. Well, this is an interview, lengthy but educative. And sincerely, I just hope that at the end of the day, that people will vote for the right person. Let us vote wisely. Come 2023. Okay, on this note, we have come to the end of the news. We say thank you for tuning in to listen. And until I come your way next time, enjoy. The rest of your day.